It's one of the worst weather disasters to strike the United States. A dangerous tornado in the Tuscaloosa metro area. As soon as the house lifted up off of us, we were instantly sandblasted. I remember being in the air. It felt like being in a blender with two by fours and sheetrock. In a matter of minutes, the monstrous twister decimates a city. Yeah, that's when it really clicked. Get away from the window! We could all die in that together. Oh my god! Now, follow the path of destruction. I can see the tornado! Block by block and minute by minute, as a violently rotating tornado tears apart businesses, wow. oh. houses, oh my god, I hope you're okay. and lives. It's all next oh my god. on Tornado 360. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, April 27th, 2011, 4.43 p.m. All around the metropolitan area, sirens wail, warning of imminent danger to over 91,000 residents. Confirmed sighting, debris falling out of the sky, 18, 19 miles ahead of the tornado now. The nightmare scenario for a highly populated area, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Within 24 hours, 226 tornadoes strike the United States. The largest outbreak on record for a single day. One of the biggest ones touches down in Greene County, Alabama, and barrels toward the city of Tuscaloosa. It's home to the University of Alabama, where students and faculty make up a large portion of the population. You need to be seeking shelter in the lowest, innermost portion of a sturdy building. Try to get under some heavy furniture. Put a bicycle helmet on. This is a, an extremely dangerous situation. It is right there! Oh my god! Run! I can see the f***ing tornado! 5 p.m. Over five miles from the outskirts of the city, on 25th Avenue East. Adam Melton and his girlfriend, Jessica Colbert, have been watching forecasts about the violent vortex from an apartment complex. You can see the tornado as it was starting to come toward Tuscaloosa. So we knew about where it was, we knew about what direction it was headed, but we didn't quite know it was going to get so close. 5.05 p.m. Over one and a half miles to the southwest, on Cedar Crest. Students Will Caruso, Aaron Ayers, and Derek Fenton have been keeping tabs on the severe tornado warnings. The news kept saying that it was headed towards downtown, which was in the opposite direction of where we lived. So we didn't think that there was really anything to worry about. I've always had a fascination with tornadoes, bad weather, and I just had my camera handy. And, you know, I thought I might get some good shots of some lightning or something turned out to be a lot more. 5.13 p.m. When entering the city limits, the tornado savagely swirls to the northeast, strengthening to a level EF4 on a scale of 0 to 5, with winds reaching 190 miles per hour. Oh, no. No doubt about it. Debris being picked up. Uh, up to at least 8,000 feet high is doing extensive damage, unfortunately, in Tuscaloosa. One mile to the northeast, on 25th Street, student Peyton Holly and his roommate Carson Tinker scan the sky for a tornado. We had heard about tornadoes all morning. I wasn't concerned because we just are so used to the tornadoes. There's so many around here in the spring. We went out on the front porch to see if we could see any sign. But little did we know it was behind us. There's so much debris in the air. Carson 
Carson. <laughs> Alert their other roommate, Alan Estes, and Carson's girlfriend, Ashley Harrison, that they need to take cover. Their best option is a three by eight foot closet. We chose the closet because it was the innermost room in the house without an exterior wall or window. Huddled together in a cramped closet, they hear the tornado thundering down the block, getting closer and closer. We knew at that point that it was going to hit the house and that there was really nothing we could do. It sounded like a train for all. But as it got closer, it got louder and louder. And then it sounded like a jet engine. It was just hovering right above the house. The house started to rattle and shake and then pick up off the foundation. I could see light because the roof was gone. The entire house is sucked into the mammoth tornado. I remember being in the air mixed in with the debris from the house. And then I blacked out. house once stood, Peyton is catapulted onto a field 75 yards away. I was knocked out or just passed out from shock. I was hit in the face. My lip was busted completely in half. Broken nose. My right knee was torn ligaments. I had a badly bruised left ankle so I could barely walk. Peyton sees Alan and Carson lying less than 10 yards away. Carson was laying down, and Alan was worried that he wasn't alive. So Alan made sure and woke him up. I was already moving, trying to get up myself, so we all just kind of banded together and made our way to the neighbor's house. Carson had a chunk of flesh taken out of his ankle. He had muscle trauma all over his body. Alan had cuts and bruises and maybe a broken finger, but he was able to help us. The neighbors heard us hollering for help. Carson just kept repeating, where's Ashley? Where's Ashley? As they stare at the endless heaps of rubble, they realize that Ashley is missing. Ashley's mom did call. I talked to her several times, but I was no help. I had no idea what had happened, where I was, or anything. As the survivors search for Ashley, the twister continues to hack a deadly trail to the northeast leveling restaurants and stores along 15th Street, a main thoroughfare. Wow. A half mile away, Will Caruso can't believe the twister is now blazing towards his home, where roommates and several friends have gathered. When I saw the tornado, it was a wall of debris, and I could see things in the air spinning and falling. 